Well, let's take you back to Kebi State now, where our senior correspondent, Femi Akonde, is in Bruni Kebi to help us better understand what the mood is like in the state capital following the conclusion, I can say, final conclusion of the governorship election, Femi. Yes, Esther, indeed, um, the final conclusion of uh, of persons that was earlier inconclusive. Well, the streets of Kebi immediately uh, felt uh, the impact of that announcement made by the returning officer declaring uh, the candidate of the All Progressives Congress as a uh, duly elected. You know, that uh, resonated on the street. There was a white, uh, wild jubilation. People just uh, were to celebrate um, that victory. But, you know, for some other because if you look at the margin of lead and uh, look at what each candidate polls, you know that it was a keenly contested election. While some were jubilating their victory, others were not uh, particularly happy about um, their loss. Some also felt uh, cheated on the ballot, but well, that's the meant to be seen if they would go and seek redress in court. But one thing that is uncertain is that the Independent National Electoral Commission has brought that process to an end. The governorship election in Kedi State has come to an end, and the people now know who their new um, governor-elect is that would uh, lead them into the next democratic dispensation. Esther. Well, it's sad that it's on the news, Femi, but if you take a look at the dynamics that have played out during this election, uh, considering if you go back to February 25th, to March 18, finally to April 15, uh, the election seems to be teaching us new things, uh, particularly when you take a look at the Electoral Act 2022. But since uh, residents in Kebbi State now have a governor, what do you think will be the take-home for INEC officials, although they say that this outing was successful, but considering what has played out in the last outing, you know, and what played out today in Kebbi State, what would you say INEC will be taking home from this? I know you spoke with Fester Sokoy earlier. Yes, for INEC, I think the take-home will be that uh, proper planning prevents poor performance. You know, when they were criticized during the presidential election for uh, their poor planning and their approach to um, the whole process. Because on election day, lots of things um, went wrong. Some with the beaver, some with deployment, logistics, and all of that. But this time around, I make sure that they avoided um, those pitfalls. Having learned from both the presidential and governorship election, they ensured that security this time around was um, watertight. I know they were able to provide security again because, you know, this was a smaller election, just in 142 polling units here in Kirby State. So there was massive deployment of security because it was um, because of violence and some other kind of irregularities that marked the previous election. That is why it was, uh, most of the lot of results were cancelled that at the end of the day led to uh, an inconclusive um, process. So this time around, you know, because of the smaller election, there was so much of concentration on these polling units in terms of security and all of that. And the uh, electoral officers this time around were properly trained and briefed to ensure that they stand their ground and ensure that the, uh, the, the vote card is also, the vote card does not exceed the number of accredited voters because we had that kind of issue during the government's election and that is why most of the results were cancelled due to our voting, but this time around we did record uh, this kind of um, incident, so it was uh, a good one for INEC, and indeed they gave themselves a pat on the back. Esther. State House correspondent Femi Yakonde, you're in Brunei. Kevin, we we'll hope to see you back in Abuja in no time. Thank you so much for speaking to us on the news this time. Well, let's take you 